Now for our story. It was just before noon. Kit Mead had come into town, into Hollywood, from her house at Malibu Beach. She was to meet Paul Cromwell for lunch, find out from him what he had learned in his talk with Mr. Griffith, the attorney, regarding the procedure for adopting Lisa Fenner's baby, which had been born almost a week ago. Kit had spent the morning in a way dear to the heart of every woman. She had a facial, a hairdo, and a manicure. Had bought a becoming new suit and a rather daring hat, which she decided to wear when she met Paul for lunch. Yes, Mrs. Mead was looking her most charming and feeling very fit indeed. The tension of the last months, during which she'd anticipated the birth of her own child with such uneasiness, followed by the shock she'd experienced after the accident which had cost her the loss of her baby, had been greatly relieved since she'd known that her plan regarding Lisa Fenner's baby was so near to fulfillment. And so it was a rather radiant, confident young woman who greeted Paul Cromwell in the foyer of a fashionable Hollywood restaurant. Now, their order's taken. Kit and Paul find themselves almost alone, with the seclusion afforded by a well-planned table reservation. Well, Mr. Cromwell, I'm a little disappointed. Why, Kit? Well, you were completely lost in admiring that blonde young woman at the corner table. No, I... I noticed as I came in. Observant little wench, aren't you? Matter of fact, she looks familiar somehow. I was just trying to place her. Mm-hmm. She was probably second from the left in the last musical you saw. Well, in any case, now that you are here, you're looking simply stunning, Kit. No, oh, don't try to flatter me, Paul. It's too late. Isn't that a new hat, Kit? Paul, we can make small talk later. At the present moment, there's just one thing on my mind. Uh, you did see Mr. Griffith, didn't you? Yes. Well... What did he say? Don't keep me in suspense. It's no go, Kit. No go? What do you mean? It just can't be done. Oh, but that's absurd. People adopt children every day. Well, there are legal difficulties. Naturally, there are, but... It's a long, complicated story, Kit. In the first place, according to the law, before you can adopt Lisa's baby, it's necessary to have the permission of Lisa's husband. You have to get Lance's consent, in other words. But why? He's not living with her. Legally, Kit, he's... Well, he's Lisa's husband. And even though they are getting a divorce... Even so, I don't see that that's an insurmountable obstacle. We'll find Lance, get his consent somehow. But you see, Kit, there's another thing. You have to get Bill's consent, too. Bill's? Oh, I don't believe it. This Mr. Griffith is just one of those unimaginative... Kit, darling. There's no sense in beating your head against a stone wall. There's simply no way around it. You have to get Bill's consent. And then there are investigations. You have to appear in court. All sorts of rigmarole. Frankly, I think the best thing is just to forget the whole idea. Oh, you do? Well, I'll tell you this, Paul. I don't give up so easily as you do. I want Lisa's baby, and I intend to have it. Well, so far as I can see, the only solution would be for Lisa simply to hand the child over to you without any formal agreement. Oh, that, oh, that would be fine, wouldn't it? Then, sometime in the future, Lisa becomes overwhelmed with maternal love, simply pops up and claims the child, and I haven't a leg to stand on. Well, it seems to be the only way, Kit. You see, in the last five or six years, the adoption laws have, well, they've tightened up a great deal because of present-day conditions. The law... And then overseas. Even so, there's always a way out of these things if you really try to find it. Did you, did you press the point? Did you try to get them to make suggestions? Or, or did you just sit there and let them overwhelm you with legal terminology? Believe me, Kit, I did everything I could. I explained the whole situation to him very clearly. But all I could get out of him was the one statement. He kept repeating over and over that it couldn't be done in this state. In this state? Wait a minute, Paul. Don't you see? That means that other states must have different laws. That there must be some other place where there aren't the same difficulties. Well, perhaps so, but it seems to me that you'll probably just run into more grief. This whole business is just too much of a headache. All right, Paul, if you feel that way, it doesn't matter to me. I'll manage by myself. I'll handle it. And I'll find some way of making this thing work. Kit spoke with the confidence of a woman who'd always managed, somehow, to get her own way. But unknown to Mrs. Mead, 
there were other factors besides the legal ones working against her, endangering the successful completion of her plans. At this moment, in a hospital not far away, Dr. Gordon is standing by Lisa Fenner's bed. Well, Mrs. Fenner, I'm afraid we won't be able to keep you here much longer. You'll be able to leave the hospital at the end of this week. Thank you, Dr. Gordon. That's very nice. Mrs. Fenner, I'd like to talk to you quite seriously. Yes, Doctor. What was it about? Mrs. Fenner, won't you tell me why you refused to see your child? But I told you before, Dr. Gordon. Can't you see it's the best thing, since I'm not going to keep the baby? Yes, yes, you did tell me that. But you see, I, I can't quite believe that you actually intend to give your baby up for adoption. Please, Dr. Gordon, I... I'd rather not. There are things I can't explain to you. Of course, I'm aware that it's not my business to pry into your affairs, Mrs. Fenner. But I remember how you looked forward to having this baby. And I wanted to ask you if you'd just see the child. See it once, at least, before you decide. No. No, I can't. If I saw it, I, I couldn't... Then you don't really want to give up the child. I was sure of it. I didn't say that. I... Oh, please, I... I'd rather not talk about it, Dr. Gordon. Well, forgive me, Mrs. Fenner. I realize it's painful for you to discuss it, but I wanted to talk to you just once more. You know, in the course of his experience, Mrs. Fenner, a doctor sees a great deal, learns a lot about the problems people have in their daily lives. Yes, I know. There are so many unhappy people in this world, so many people who are insecure, not sure of themselves, afraid of life. Individuals who seem to have no center... No roots. And, Mrs. Fenner, most of these people have one thing in common. Yes, Doctor. Most of them, Mrs. Fenner, have had an unhappy childhood, have lacked the security of affection and tenderness which they needed as children. The love which is given so freely, so instinctively, by a mother or father who truly want children. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Because I knew... I was positive that you wanted your child very much. Yes. Yes, I did. But everything's changed now. I'd be alone. The baby wouldn't have the sort of home it should have. Well, uh, sorry to say this, Mrs. Fenner, but I... Well, frankly, I am disappointed. You always seem so courageous to face life with such integrity, I... I can't believe that you fear the responsibility of rearing your child, that you consider that a burden. You're young, healthy, talented. And I'm sure that your friends would be anxious to see that you had nothing to worry about. Mr. Cromwell has spoken to me quite frankly. No. No, I'd never accept any help. I couldn't on that basis. It's just that I can't say... Please, Dr. Gordon. Very well, Mrs. Fenner. Evidently, there's nothing I can say to change your mind. But I still can't believe that you would willingly give up your child for adoption. No matter how ideal the arrangement, or how difficult your own situation. If you really understood how much is at stake. As I said, I've seen a great deal of suffering in my time. And so much of it might have been avoided. The wise, tender guidance of a loving mother is a boy's most precious possession. Nothing can take its place. I hope you'll think that over, Mrs. Fenner. Dr. Gordon left then, closing the door gently after him. Lisa lay with her eyes closed. Tears welled out from beneath the lids and rolled down her cheeks. Try as she would, the doctor's words, the truth of what he had said, could not be forced back. She kept thinking. They can't have the baby and Paul, too. And if I were alone, it, it wouldn't be fair to the baby. Dr. Gordon doesn't know. He doesn't understand. But the doubts Lisa Fenner had been fighting against were strong. So much Dr. Gordon had said was true. She couldn't deny it, even to herself. His words had carried the weight of a truth she knew in her heart. Lisa Fenner lay there, troubled and disturbed, fighting to cling to the painful decision which had cost her so much. 
there was still a possibility that she might change. That in the end, Kit Mead might be defeated by the laws of compassion and love. <laughs> 